All right, Roundtable Podcast. I'm your boy, Corey G, at Small Arms Danny, at Trey Speed, and the graphic gangster himself, Cole Susack, brought to you by MaxUpperMuscle.com. We've had uh, several guests on recently, so we're back just us chopping it up. We got the box in the middle. We're outside. I- I've really been inspired by some of these people we've interviewed lately. Luke, Edward- Luke Edwards gets a kidney a week after we interview him. Yeah. Jason open in his gym. Tony's fucking crazy ass stories it has really been uh, I like you know I've been into the groove with the guests but I was looking forward to just chopping it up with you guys though too no for sure for sure yeah. so what do you think Trayvon yeah I mean we had like a just like a wide variety of like some really great guests the past couple of weeks that I think like listeners can take a lot away from but I mean I'm excited to, to chop it up with you guys again yeah see whatever topics are brought to the table obviously for sure. obviously we didn't talk about them beforehand so we have no idea <laughs> wait, what we're talking wait, about wait do you mean that we didn't prepare Trayvon <laughs> see but we're always prepared we're always prepared though <laughs> stay when you, ready when you stay yeah. ready yeah. stay ready talk about that Cole. You know, That's a good I just, topic. I just Talk know that ready. whenever I fucking roll up here that we're podcasting. So whatever's in my mind or whatever topic we somehow get on, we're hitting it. Doesn't Actually, matter. Dude, Aaron just walked in. Perfect. Should we just throw Aaron off yeah, this real yeah. quick? Get yeah. here. All right, yeah, here. Want me to go get him? <laughs> yeah, go get him. You want to grab Is another mic? Front? Yeah. Yeah, I'll grab another mic. You grab another mic. Do just it. keep <laughs> Yeah, just keep it rolling. We'll just, just throw it. Right, yeah, right. yeah. Keep rolling. Grab Sorry, another mic, chill. Cole. Grab him and grab another mic. All right, so we thought we weren't going to have a guest, but we're going to have a guest real quick. It's okay. Aaron from Storied Rivals. What I like about this is we've got a deal with Max Effort with Aaron from Storied Rivals. What is Storied Rivals? I'm going to tell you right now. Storied Rivals is a company that's been built over the last 15 years that has that captures all the highlights for about 25 schools within our area. And, man, I wish I had some fucking Storied Rivals. I know I'm making highlights against Treadway right now. But if I would have had Storied Rivals to see the time I almost dunked, you know what I mean? Yeah, like to see con- the three, like, con- like content of your of high school, of like your high school sports. Imagine career. if you That's it, a cool concept, dude. What? And you probably have maybe some stuff from the track, but like, cause you're a little younger. But mm. dude, I ain't got nothing. I got some yeah. like VHS shit, bro. And you can't even see. Yeah, it sucks. Like, AG at Story Rivals, they did his baseball this year. Like, to be able to go back the rest of your life. Yeah, and check that out. It's sick. Yeah, I want to tell my kids how sweet I was, but they yeah. don't fucking believe me. Would you have gotten a scholarship? <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. That would, but that was version kind of one of it, right? Check, yeah. check. JJ Huddle, his shout out, Cole Susack. Okay, when you get a microphone again, did you tell him he's gonna jump on? Yeah. All right, beautiful. So it's like, uh, well, what, back to story rivals. Us getting in with them has allowed the local high school to really be like, all right, who the fuck is Max Effort? These guys are supporting us. A lot of people don't support high schools, especially supplements, right? It's kind of like a foreign thing. So mm-hmm. it's been cool. Um, but the story of, like, bootstrapping, starting a company, I mean, I just it's always here to the, the feedback from, like, early guys like that, guys that have built something good. And he's he's doing what he loves to do for his life, which mm-hmm. is awesome. All right, we got him or what? Can we test it? Yeah, yeah. Give me a test. Yo, Mike, test it. Oh, test. fucking beautiful. Sound good? Good. Beautiful. I like just hey, Aaron, on the fly, bro. We're ready. <clears throat> yep. Grab that chair, kid. Let's rock. All right, so I have, I have a story about my my football highlights. Please. <laughs> so <laughs> at Bellsville. <laughs> Get ready for this. So at Bellsville in like t- 2000. Hey, grab that chair, Aaron. 2000, like 12 or 13. Well, uh, need, Cole needs a chair. Bellsville was way too stand. poor to <laughs> – Bellsville was way too poor to afford huddle. Okay, okay. Because usually, like, there's, like, a whole staff and, like, production thing that goes into huddle. Yeah. So, obviously, I'm, like – I think I was like 14 at the time. I'm fucking grinding. I'm like, I need colleges to see this. Sure. So our coaches used to record on probably like this VHS camera that had to be from like 2006. The quality was fucking terrible. Mm-hmm. I edited that bitch myself. Like, Fuck. Of course I, he did. I probably spent like two days total and max editing my own highlights, fucking uploading. They're on my YouTube and shit. Hell yeah. Well, yeah. what was the music? Oh, uh, I used question. I used the instrumental to No New Friends by Drake. And I edited my buddy Dalton's, and I think I used, oh, fuck, I don't know. It was like a, maybe like a Radioactive by Imagine Dragons, maybe. <laughs> cool. Right. You were like a bright star early. Facts, dude. I was hustling. Bro. They had a website called Scouting Ohio. Yeah. Which yeah. was literally like Facebook <laughs> for athletes. Okay. That was so underutilized, but that was like at the time the only thing college coaches would like 
kind of check out on their own to see yeah. about players. I was posting on that bitch like just bench two twenty five for twelve. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Just went to this camp, just did all this, and that's how I went on a visit to Purdue, Purdue. Cincinnati, all that shit, dude. I mean, you grinded a fucking <laughs> visit to Purdue. That's pretty I impressive. Was the hell out of my as a what two hundred and ten pound linebacker, dude. At that time, I, was, I weighed one eighty. <laughs> one dude. So I I roll in I roll into Purdue, and first off. I, whenever I got the letter in the mail, I was like, I cannot fucking believe this is real. It was a whole hand, like, it looked like a handwritten letter that some, like, designer, like, basically made, like, a template. Yeah. Had my name on it, had the head coach sign it. You flip it over, and it's like, all right, you can choose from any one of these games. So I chose to go to the Purdue-Michigan State, and at the time, Michigan State was really fucking good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Went to Purdue. The, as soon as I roll in there, there's, like, guys, like, 6'1", like, just massive. I, I'm standing to a dude that looks yoked as fuck to my right. I go, oh yeah, what position you play? Like thinking, you know, I don't like. I don't like know, he yeah. might also be a linebacker. He goes, yeah, I play corner. I'm like, oh fuck. <laughs> yeah, but it was awesome. This dude's yeah. a grown man. Facts. All right, Aaron. Yo, welcome yo. to the show, bro. What's going on, guys? Aaron from Storied Rivals. Good, Good to, to have see you. Guys. Absolutely. We uh, obviously didn't plan this, so that's the best kind. Yeah, it's football Friday, man. So just uh, we won't keep it for too long. We know right. you got a lot to do today. No, we're good. But I gave him a little uh, kind of background on what you do, but tell us like early. How you started out, what the where the idea came from. I know it's 15 years ago, right? right man, at this yeah. point, so give us a, give us a little background. Yeah, right? it's such a long story. Um, but really, you know, we came out in 2008, started mm-hmm. doing this. My background was in journalism. Okay, wanted to be on Sports Center. That was the dream. Like yeah. you're you are basically right now. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it has evolved. In 2022, I mean, you don't need a studio now to have Sports Center, right? Yeah. So. To, 2000, 2008 uh, said, let's quit the TV business. Let's start doing something a little more high-end. You know, I grew up watching Inside the NFL. Yeah, yeah, Which like was that. a lot more interesting maybe than the game sometimes because the way they sure. uh, wrote out the game highlights and from behind the scenes. So, And really when I was working in TV, what I found was we couldn't get to all the games. Mm. And, it, and even when you did, you could only show like 30 seconds. So the thought was, would people want to have more – and, uh, and really be able to pay for it. So we were changing the revenue model as well. You know, what are people willing to pay for? Because the existing media model at that time was still all straight advertising. Sure. So we flipped the media model a little bit to where you can buy your own media coverage, and then we still have sponsorships and advertising along with it. Fuck yeah. But, you know, how can you do it more high end and need to generate more revenue? And high school sports is a crazy niche because, uh, you know, there are people that are fanatical about high school football across the nation. But most of the time, you only care about the team in your backyard. Yeah, true. So it's a very limited audience. But that one audience, and that one community is super, super passionate, even though it might only be a few thousand people. I think also capturing me and Trey was talking about this. Like, I wish I had my highlights, bro. Right. Like, you know, like the, the, the capturing. And obviously things are different now. With the, Anybody can have their phone out. But to have like – High quality, Sports Center level type production for your high school, like you know, because you guys covered AG's baseball season last yeah, yeah, year. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's fucking sick, bro. Yeah, I mean that that's that's the you're, idea. You're giving us like you're giving us like memories that we right. would would forget otherwise. Well, I'm glad you appreciate that because at, at the end of the day, I mean, yeah, we we capture some unreal highlights because we are at so many events. Yeah, but the. Uh, the North Star of what we're trying to do is capture the memories, yeah. right? You know, it, if the camera's not rolling, you cannot get the memory. Nice. And we were first start growing the business, I would meet with like a group of moms, of football moms. And uh, you, know, you went know, in through the mommies. Well, you got to. <laughs> I, well, I learned. You got to? <laughs> yeah. well, you, I mean, There's hey, the fucking hey, clincher. Shout yeah, shout out to the mommies. <laughs> but, <laughs> but because sometimes the co- at the time the coaches didn't care, the athletic director certainly didn't want one more thing to worry about. So you went through the kids and through the moms, mm-hmm. and they made it happen. But when I talked to the moms trying to grow our, our original clientele before people really knew what we were, I would tell them, look, you guys are going to talk about this, and you're really excited for football right now. It's July, August. You're super pumped. I said, but I guarantee you in November you will be crying and we're the only ones that can give that back to you because mm. it'll be over. So yeah, Especially when your kid's a senior. Right. Mm. It goes quick. So we're trying to capture those just those moments with your buddies, the behind-the-scenes stuff, and uh, re uh, make a mini-movie of the game so you remember what it felt like on that fall day. Yeah. If you go back and watch – now, this this game didn't turn out well for Granville or Sarah and Granville, mm. but in, what, 2019 – I think in 2018, Licking Valley, it was the year Licking Valley was state runner-up. They played at Granville, I think, week nine. Um, Licking Valley won, but we, 
the fall leaves were so gorgeous mm-hmm. that day. And, and when you watch the video, it takes you back to that yeah. that moment you in can time. Feel it. You really can, man. So it's fun. And if you look at our Twitter right now tonight, uh, week three, we are all over the state. We're at St. X in Cincinnati. I was just say, how many games are you capturing now? Uh, uh, over twenty, rate? over twenty a week. Over twenty a week. We one guy a week. <laughs> Uh, one guy at a game per week. Yeah. So we're at St. X in Cincinnati. We got a guy at Martin's Ferry tonight. Oh, shout out High Valley. High Valley. Down yeah. in the Valley. I was in the Valley last night for, for Union Local. And what's cool about what you guys are doing is we're able to get max effort yep. into the different high schools and introduce them into the brand. And they really, really enjoy it. You know, last week we were in the Valley, Ohio uh, Union Local. That, yeah. that coaching staff already knew all about oh, the did Max he? Effort team. Who's the coach there? Um, Bernie Thompson. Okay. So he uh, he's sick. a big follower it, of, of the program. Him and some of the assistant coaches, have they, they did the powerlifting meet at Old School. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. So Hell yeah. yeah Shout like out Bernie. What's up? You guys. That's yeah, awesome. So the, but the plays of the week, so the plays of the week come out every Friday. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, if Check out Storied Rivals on social yeah. media. You're going to see the top plays of the week from Central Ohio and, and the Ohio Valley. And that, of course, is sponsored by Max Effort Muscle. Yeah. And uh, our player of the week, you know, we had uh, – who did we we choose this week? It was uh, the quarterback at Talmadge threw for almost 400 yards and about a half of football. Well, and yeah, wow. just being able to, like, for us to be associated with the, the kid that's had a stud performance like that. And, yeah, it's just – it was a great – it's a great opportunity, Aaron. We, we just really appreciate it. I want to go back to when you made the jump. Yeah, because I think that that's like something that's understated a lot of like how that mental. You said, "Hey, this is what I think people would want." Then that, but that jump to say, "I'm gonna actually go do it." What yeah. was that process? Obviously, you were much younger. You probably didn't have kids. You right. maybe weren't married yet. Yeah, but like, but taking that chance and then scaling it is what's scary for everybody. It's crazy scary, and I, I was just telling uh, Ben Kaufman the other day about you know, Shout I don't out know, ben. right? I, I don't. If I had were to do it today, I don't know if I'd have the balls to do it. For something about that period of time, you think because you, uh, you have more, you have more things to handle now. More just things more to handle, obviously, family, more responsibility. But you know, w- when you're younger, you you want to take a little more risk. Mm-hmm. And I don't know, my back, I felt like my back was against the wall. I really wanted to do something, and then you start feeling that that uh, that pop of people really being interested in what you want to do, and and really you're always trying to problem solve. How can this business potentially work? Because the thing with us was, it wasn't like we were starting a restaurant. There've been a million other restaurants. This I didn't, didn't exist. I didn't know of it existing anywhere. Yeah. Um, I knew of a dad that might charge a couple hundred bucks to make a film, but never trying to scale it as an actual company. Yeah. So learned as we went, but making the jump was really, it, I tell people the story all the time. So in 2008, I was like, I quit my TV job without a real job. I actually went back and worked for a buddy's print shop okay. and, and left the media business. And while then I was trying to plan, how do I create this company? I'm sitting there creating logos and I was calling my football contacts that I knew. I said, would you want a highlight video? Keep in mind, I had no video equipment. I had nothing yet. I didn't even really know how to edit nonlinear. Uh, because, I don't even know what that means. Well, nonlinear <laughs> editing is computer editing. Oh, okay. So when it, I worked yeah. in TV, even in 2008, we did tape to tape decks. Oh, geez. still right. <laughs> A little old school. Yeah. So I didn't know, and I, I didn't know much about equipment at that point. Really didn't know anything. So I'm emailing schools, calling moms. Finally, my alma mater, John Glenn, said, in uh, about week four, they're like, "Yeah, we'll do it." I charge them 800 bucks. I'm like, "Sweet." So let's order gear. So I had to 15 years ago. Is Frank still there? Uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> my, yeah the, my, my cousin. Yeah, That's the old cool. relative. Yeah. 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 So um, made the jump, and then people were like, what is this? And and we took advantage of YouTube. Yeah. I mean, YouTube came out in 06. It was still really, really new in 08. I'm like, look, I don't need a multi-million dollar TV station to get information out. Yeah. And uh, we really took advantage of that. And really, the first five years, um, we really just delivered a season film to the team and didn't produce on a weekly basis. But then once I really thought about it, I'm like, we're a media company. What are we doing? Yeah. Like, let's start distributing it on a weekly basis. Let's actually act like a media company. Let's get sponsorships. Let's take advantage of the audience we have and the people that love what we do. Mm-hmm. And But did to answer your question, the jump is tricky, man. It is. It, even today, you know, yesterday we did payroll. I'm like, this is stupid. This is a lot <laughs> of payroll, man. Like, how do you do this every week? But it just kind of works itself out. You keep yeah. grinding. And at some point... Just talk about you build confidence. At some point, you just build, become so confident that this is going to work. I'll make yeah. it work. You're going to have a solution. And you, and you figure when it I out. When I made the jump from personal training to MP, which is around the same time, like 2008, mm-hmm. I just remember, like, Ray had just quit her job because she was going to stay home. We had saved money for her to stay home and raise the kids. Alex is, I don't know, maybe, let's see, he's a senior. He's probably three, almost four, and she's pregnant with Madeline. And I'm like, now I'm about to – quit my job give all my clients away to start some company with a guy in denver i never met before in person great idea (laughs) (laughs) but 
uh, I was like, if I don't give my – in my mind back then, Aaron, I was like, if I don't give myself a chance to try to be my version of Bill Phillips because that's who I looked up to, right, the AS guy, I got to roll this dice once to give myself a chance at it. Um, and, yeah, I don't it, – it just did not make – mine didn't make a lot of sense on paper, to be honest with you. It's fucking glad it worked out like kind of how it did. Right. But – I don't know. There was just something inside me that was like, I think it's just time to fucking. Right. And and also the way I process this is two ways. I knew I could get more clients. It would take. It would struggle. Rachel uh, cashed out her four hundred one from her being a teacher over in Hebron, and I had to pay the taxes to pay my mortgage for like about a year. Is what. So I gave myself a little leeway. But like I was like, well, fuck it. The same way I looked at going from the coal mine to personal training was I already did the job that's my fallback job I already did it I wasn't scared of it I was actually pretty good at it no big deal if this shit don't work I'm just going to drive my ass back home and get back underground I looked at the same way when I jumped to that if this supplement shit don't work I can go back to personal right. training so I think along my way I was it was scary but I had already lived the previous job previously and I was okay so, and to me, I already felt successful because I was already out the coal mine. So that's the way I process it. And I'm trying to like do better job of explaining that to people because that's where they, that's where they limit themselves at. It really is. And it's so important. Like, thank you for sharing those stories early because those are the stories that keep me going to keep other young entrepreneurs going yeah, as well. Yeah. Because there's like, it's not just me. It feels like it's, it's just you. It's everybody, bro, that tries. But it's everybody that <laughs> yeah. tries. And there's that, those scary moments, those risks you take and, yeah. and, so I related to that. You know, I've listened to you tell all your early stories back when you were starting podcasting. Yeah. You really put a lot on the table, and I listen to that as, as motivation to keep going in that. You know, you're going to figure it out. You keep grinding. It's, it's going to pop. It's going to work. Um, but like, even like what you said, you know, I worked in, in the media business. And I, I was tired of killing myself. It's like, you know, I'm going to kill myself. I might as well benefit from, from it personally instead of someone else benefiting from it. Because yeah. I'm going to keep. I'm not going to stop working hard. This is what you do. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to keep working hard. So I might as well roll the dice. And really, what I also thought was I was 28 at the time. It's like I try to forecast the future. I'm like, what will 15 years from now look like? If I'm if I'm still on this track, fuck you sitting right here. <laughs> well, it would be what if I didn't do the jump? Yeah, the, oh, the, yeah, the gotcha. trajectory was I'd be 40, 41, like I am now. Yeah, I'd have a kid that I couldn't even spend time with because I would never be home. Yeah, and then I'd be 15 years late, too late to even fix it. I'm like, let's fix it now. Let's take the chance when I can, and hopefully. 15 years now i can't sit here with you do yeah. a podcast talk about what did it didn't work yeah, yeah yeah and um think about this guy because well danny would be around this age but like you didn't really start till 28 or 30 my big one didn't start till 28 or 30 these dudes are so young oh they you know such I mean? advantage and danny just now 30 it's like they're so far ahead bro and already know so much more than we did oh yeah <laughs> what i love about their age group is that they are they're rolling the dice early they're giving up some of their young um fun yeah yeah, yeah. still For having sure. fun but also grinding a lot of people this age group don't grind early they 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 so you guys are going to have the advantage major oh, advantage because you're living bro. it every day 100 percent. it's good cole go back to you buddy. yeah let's uh i'm interested to hear the what was the process like of starting out with how many guys like did you rig, like originally start out with like was there like four of you guys so yeah talk about that to now where you have 20 different creative dudes and talk about that evolution because as a creative, like you, you know that your skill, but how can you trust like those other guys to produce at the same level of quality? Oh man, you know? yeah, there, there's so many stories that go into that. I mean, we have like eight full time editors. I think I don't really edit anymore, but I shoot a lot, still film a lot of games. You like uh, still being on the ground floor like I that? Do. Yeah. I, I do. I do. Like, not tell. as much. Yeah. You know, like tonight, like you know, I, or I'll film a game and tomorrow my feet will really hurt. Yeah. You know. Um, but uh, I do enjoy being out there and experiencing the game and just doing what yeah. I do. Um, but when we first started hiring people in, like my first editor who's still with me, Sean, he, he's unbelievably talented. But I remember looking over his shoulder and, like, picking it apart and wanting to change everything because I didn't do it. Mm. And now I force myself to watch and I try to see the creative side. Obviously, we have a formula and we, we want things to look. But I also try to give a little creative. I'm like, so instead of, like, judging and be like, nah, that's not it, be like, Okay, I see what you did. Okay, I, I like that. Let's go. Um, so it's very hard to scale a service-based business yeah. um, in order to get the right people to be able to do it. But and I don't know. You've probably said this before. Other people said it before. You want to you want to hire people, and work with people smarter than you. Mm. So I have a lot of people way more talented than me. In I certain can't areas. do what most of any of my guys can do. Right. Like Danny's a beast. <laughs> so at why? So why am I even going to try? <laughs> yeah. 
Cole. I mean, I, I <laughs> talked to Cole about graphic design in the past because I, you know, I, I can I think mess that's around. That's how we heard about you because right. you did some work with Cole. Right. You yeah. know, Cole reached out or I reached out to him. I saw he did some work. I'm always looking for graphic designers because I'm I'm kind of a self-made hack, mm-hmm. so I'll do a lot of it on my own. But I want help, and and Cole was had a skill set that I liked in his style. So, and then I was like, oh yeah, he does work for Mac. So, um. But yeah, man, the, the the people and the scalability and getting them all on the same page, I'd like to think that's part of our secret sauce too, is our ability to train really quickly. Mm-hmm. If mm-hmm. someone wants to do it, I could teach you within two weeks if you really wanted to. If you don't want, especially you're already creative, you got the mindset. Mm-hmm. But if you don't want to, I can't teach you. And we, and, you know, can't teach an old dog new tricks. That's that's pretty true. Mm-hmm. You know, if you had already were a camera guy and you came to me, you'd already have your style and think you're the best ever. I'm like, nah, that doesn't work for us though. Yeah, because you've and got the style you want to deliver it. Very much. Makes sense. And, and what has changed, too, in these 15 years is everyone has a mirrorless camera with really crispy, nice lenses. Mm-hmm. And it doesn't take much for something to look pretty sick. But in the end, they don't have – I don't think they always have the cinematography side of it. They don't know how to frame a shot. It's sometimes really shaky. But it pops because they got the great catch and the, the bokeh was really good on the camera. So now you're competing with that, which we didn't really have that in the past. True. So everyone has a camera now. Everyone produces highlights where I think we win is the consistency yeah. of the product and how we, like if you were to edit a film, I could pick it apart. You'd be like, I didn't think of any of those things. Mm-hmm. Like, well, those are the things we look it's for. Hours, bro. That makes it sense. That, but out. also like the relationship that you've built with like all these coaches. Yeah. Like anyone who's like trying to basically like rip off what you guys are doing, they haven't put in the years or went out and made all these connections to right. where it could last forever. Right, man. The relationships are huge. Um, I'm really that. That's the best part of the business, guys. And like, it's the relationships with the people, the lives you guys are changing with, with your products you sell and and the workouts you put out and the relationships we make. You know, I if we stop doing business with somebody for whatever reason, could be financial, could be you know just uh, they're moving in a different direction. I mean, my heart hurts a little bit. Yeah. Because I consider people we do business with, you know, family because we are in we are in the locker room with them where we are their family. Uh, but just the people I meet, man, meet people from all over. Um, every community is different. Um, every coach is different. Yeah. And the, every parent group is different. Mm-hmm. So uh, it has definitely been interesting to go around and make those relationships. And But that's what I value most. The people I get to see on the sideline when I go to a game, certain schools I'm there more often so they know me more. Yep. Um, so that's always a cool experience to get to Helps different towns. Helps you're a generally nice guy. Oh, I appreciate I, it. I believe people I like it. like you, and when they see you, they're like, "We want to support I try this to. guy." I try to. Man. I don't think I think it's just your that's just your nature, bro. Which is, it. helps because that's why I was told my mom like, I'm "Glad I grew up in this small ass town," and I'm and I you taught me how to treat people because at the end of the day, the intangible is people got to know, like, and trust you. No, like, trust. Right. And then they want to support you. And those are those yeah. are keys. And I've modeled a lot of what we do because you know I only met you last year. But have followed the brand and your journey for about ten, yeah, you know, thanks. since the MP days. So, you putting out the content you have and being transparent as you have. I'm not a very transparent guy. I'm not good at. I like to just work in silence, grind, and mm-hmm. I'm not vocal enough. I feel like if I would be more vocal, we'd probably be a little more successful because I don't put myself out there enough. Mm-hmm. But you doing that along the way probably impacted quite a few people. Mm-hmm. Um, just that thing about quitting, whether it be fitness or business. Yeah, yeah. Well, everybody has some thoughts. It's the key is getting through them, that's for sure. It really is, man. Daniel. Um, yeah, you kind of just answered it right there. But, like, as far as, like, sources of inspiration, you, I mean, you, you keep talking about, like, you, you know, you started developing, like, a formula. Obviously, it evolved over the 10 or 15 years, right? So, like, what kind of uh, – where did you kind of look for when you started out? Like, what was your starting point? And then how did that kind of, you know, take hold? Because I'm just thinking about, like, the – like when you go and show up on a Friday night, like what does that even look like? When do you get there? What are you doing first? Um, or like how did you even know where to start? Right, Dan. That's, that's cool, man. That's a great question. I always wonder like how do we develop it? It's like you just do it and you figure out what works and what doesn't um, because we didn't have anyone to model after. And I do There's feel no like, blueprint. No, there, <laughs> there hasn't been. There isn't. And I do feel like there are people that have seen our blueprint and tried to – and it's cool. I mean that's what happens. What happens in life, you know, they, they see what we do and they want to do it too, which I find inspirational. I think it's really cool. Um, I like people it's to tag us once in a while and be like, hey, man, I saw this. You know, thanks for the inspiration. <laughs> just give me that at least. But, um, you know, we, we've developed going to – the idea was we go to the game and capture – it was really big about the coaches wearing mics and getting behind in the locker room yeah. and all those different things. Um, but then it just, it just evolved into how we break down the game. When we first started doing it, um, we, I, was, I wasn't even going to put music behind it. 
the idea was just we're going to have footage of games that no one else has, so let's just put it out. Yep. Then we started paying music licensing fees um, and figured out how to approach the game. But we get to a game, it kickoffs at 7, we get there at 545, and we start going through the gambit of, of capturing and documenting. Um, we're not like we're filming three hours. We're, we're very uh, strategic in how much we film and what we film. Mm -hmm. Just trying to get the images that help tell the story. Try to get beautiful images, and it's hard to always be creative. Um, but just force yourself to get the images. We don't need team offense at the end of warm-ups. Like, that's boring. I want faces. I want moments. Mm -hmm. I want cinematic. For sure. Yeah, that's oh, cool, man. Sick. Trayvon, fellow camera extraordinaire, your turn. <laughs> <laughs> um so like I, I don't have a question but i just think it's like like Corey was saying like it's just a super cool concept like i'm thinking back like if i had like more track memories or something shit like that from yeah it'd be amazing school, it'd be, like super sick and everything yeah well and trey's you know, on the younger side and still didn't have that access yeah, right. you know what i mean so it's like you're you know it was light years for us bro Big but time. even not that far as you'd been what five years removed from high school roughly yeah. you know what i'm saying so just that the, even with the younger end to have it presented the way that you present it you know right. what i mean it's yeah. it's pretty fucking yeah, cause outstanding like, i mean like you said like it's about like the memories i mean that's what it's about so like yeah you know, once those are passed once they're passed you can't you, yeah. especially when you operate in a in a world that's like ours right we do so and, and everyone's busy so i'm not saying we're busier than the world but we got so much shit going on yeah. bro i swear the memories just keep getting jammed further back you know, I mean, the memory of me beating Treadway today will be long gone yeah. <laughs> in a couple of days. <laughs> a poster Clip movie. that. Yeah. <laughs> it yeah. would be the poster, Doug. Yeah. But the reality is, is that we're, we're doing our own story rivals for that. It's called Jump Bros. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> you should. You should do some epic pieces, too, Literally. where it's like a real slow build, Kyle. You yeah. know, uh, it's a real yeah. slow build with some epic music and then the. Oh, there's going to be some epicness of this last one. But the, uh, I think that that right there is what you should value, bro. Because you are giving some, like, look at it like this, man. Some people never compete in anything again. We're outliers. Yeah, good point. We're complete outliers, bro. We still got practice time. We still got game days. We're still pushing each other competitively, whether it's business, whether it's in that fucking gym right there. Most people don't do that. They're poke high fucking Ed <laughs> right. Bundy the, or whatever, Al, Al, Al Bundy, Bundy yeah. the rest of their life because that moment in high school was the only thing they lock into for the next 30 years, bro, at every barbecue. Now, I still got those moments, too. I was just telling one a few minutes ago that Al Oop, I threw my homie <laughs> on the, the, we came down on the one three one press and I hit him with it. I was telling Brian, but the real, but if I had that captured, boy, I would have right. brought it up. And, uh, and, and, you know, in that emotion. So you, you should be real proud of that because that's something that you're giving to these people for the duration, bro. I think it's awesome. Yeah, yeah thanks so much. It, it's fun. It's fun. It's, it's a challenge every day. And like you said, competing. I think that that's nice. Yeah. You, got, you guys, you don't think about it all the time, but like you said, the gym, business, life, we're competing and um, just trying to better yourself every day. I, I can't imagine not doing that. I'd be kind of yeah. bored, I think. What? Right. Wait, Kyle was yeah. giving me spare fingers. Okay. Gotta take a break. All right, All right cool. we're going to commercial break. We'll be right back. The Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Max from Muscle. With us is Director of Sports Performance, Mr. Tyler Treway. Mr. Treway. What's up, Cole? How are you? I'm good. How are you? Good. Cole, you know what? What? I had this college coach call me the other day, and you know what he said to me? What'd he say? He said, Treadway. I need hooked up with a product <laughs> that's safe and effective for my guys. They're not gonna piss hot. And they're good they're not going to piss hot. This you know motherfucker. What <laughs> What'd you tell him? I pen. got you, Coach. We have two products that are sponsored. Two, two products <laughs> that going. are yeah. NSF certified uh -huh. through that label. And they... This has been awful. Uh, oh, you're good. Uh, <laughs> Tread, hey, Treadway's... All right, all right, run it back. Here. Treadway's here, here, challenge here, today. Here, this has been, this has been a rough day. day. <laughs> it's been a rough day. day. Bro, Treadway has been having a rough day. <laughs> <ass day. laughs> All right, we, we can go. We can bring it back. Right. We'll bring it. Hey, just make sure you speak into the as you guys are going back and forth. Well, no, I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm now Treadway. Oh, okay, 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 okay. Here we go. <laughs> this episode of the Roundtable Podcast is brought to you by Max Effort Muscle. Here to talk to us about Max Effort Muscle is my good friend, Cole Susak. Cole, what's up? Hey, what up? Uh, actually, I'm Treadway. You're me. Uh, yeah, so uh, we have two product sponsors that's NSF certified. Treadway or Cole, do you know what that means? 
What does that mean? That means that with this sticker right here, everything that's in that we say is in this product is actually in this product. So if you're a coach, if you're a player, if you're a cheerleader, you can take our products and you won't have to worry about pissing hot on a drug test. Thank you, Cole. Or Treadway. Awesome, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Now we're back. Now we're no, back. Now we're All back. Right. Now we're back. Uh, Ben's your trainer, right? Yeah, yeah. I've been working so, out with Ben. He's getting me right. Yeah, Ben Kaufman just walked through. We'll have to have him on the podcast at some point. He just came to get his order, but he, uh, dude just started his first gym. Same what? thing, man. Yeah, great man. young yeah. entrepreneur. Just uh, has the great it. mindset. Yeah, fuck with it, man. So what do you kind of like envision going forward? Or like what's something dude. that you want Danny, to do? Danny, why are you such a fucking unit, bro? I did arms this morning. Ah, all right. I did triceps Continue. this morning too. <laughs> Shout out triceps. I love that. Yeah. I love that. We need to pull that clip, dude. Yeah. You should put that on the small arms account. Which one? Uh, uh, I don't know. Go ahead. <laughs> the small arms account. Should, the small arms account uh, needs to blow up. Yeah. You got to get on that. You got to get on that. I need to up my game. Yeah. Um, right. What was your question? It was the, the good. future, right? Yeah. You know, like yeah. moving yeah. forward, man. I, I don't know. I mean, what's funny is we're 15 years in trying to perfect the model. That's the biggest thing. The model is still. I've been grinding for so long. 15 years in trying to perfect the model. Big time because, and you know, we have revenue, of course, but the margins aren't where they need to be. Mm -hmm. um, Are they ever? <laughs> well, they're definitely not right now. I tell yeah, everyone, I my, my wife has a real job. I film sports is what I tell people. You know, <laughs> that's what I tell people. So it, it's a little easier that way. But, um, but perfecting the model, because I think once it is perfected, and what I need to get some of my time back mm -hmm. so I can help perfect it. I'm still grinding on the daily stuff, doing a lot of little minor stuff that I, I really should be doing more higher end stuff so I could try to grow the business. Um, but I like to perfect the model and then see where it goes from there. I think it could work in obviously any community. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but we do sell like team apparel now. That's been a big yeah. part of our business. That that's actually changed our business, being able to uh, capitalize on our it's audience. Another revenue source. Another bro. revenue stream, which is huge. Yeah, um, it's big. I want to do some educational type stuff. Teach people how we do what we do, mm -hmm. um, and a variety of ways. Maybe sell that. Um, like, are you trying to get in as many schools as humanly possible? No. Or? Okay. That's no. what I was trying to get at. No, was... not under our current roof. Like, you know, do you franchise it? Do you um, hire a territory manager and go to another area? I, I think some version of a level of a, tr of a franchise maybe. So when I first started, my idea was that people like me who wanted to be on TV or wanted to be a journalist, and there was not a career path that was both um, good quality of life and actually financially stable. So the idea was, can we create a media entity that can provide both of those things and f completely flip the game? Yep. And it still doesn't exist. So I, I could see, you know, former journalists like myself or kids coming out of college says, I don't want to go that path. I want to buy a storied rivals franchise, make a little bit more money and work a little better hours. And the path is put together. That's that. Well, so that's probably about, the future. Think about, more. Think yeah, about yeah. this. That's like cool. uh, there's the Mr. Electric or there's these franchises that are like. They're they're uh, based on one kind of skill, right? That but it's all laid out, and if you you have some, you can just jump right into that business in your area. That makes sense because right. there could be a storied rivals franchise in in four, four different parts of Ohio, probably. Right, and they don't have to be big. Like maybe this is the big one where we have a lot of teams, but it really could be a profitable thing. I was running the numbers the other day. If it's just you know one person, you know how many teams you want to cover in your area? Okay, well here's what you end up making. And maybe we handle the sponsorship side for you because we have more experience selling the yeah. sponsorships. Maybe we handle the apparel side for you. You get a cut of that. I don't know. It could be a path, though. we got to figure it out because adding more teams is not the answer. Um, now, if we add a team and then stack a lot of advertising and apparel on that team, yes. But every time we add a team, it stretches resources even more thin. Now, I, we, I don't, we don't really reach out to clients trying to sign teams. They usually come to us at this point, and we're pretty much maxed out all the time. But if a team calls us, I'm almost heartbroken to say we can't do it, and that's really never happened. If anything, I'm like, we can do one or two games. I can't commit Got it. to a, a lot, especially if they're a little further away mm -hmm. um, just because we don't have the resources. And even like, oh, can you get a guy to a guy in, in Wheeling to film? Like, mm, not easier said than done. I mean, it'd have to really search. They'd have to go through training. And you can't train football without live action either. Yeah. That's true. That yeah. would be tricky. Yeah, which this was going to go to my next question. What's like – I guess three to five tips on someone who sees what you guys are doing is like, ah, I want to learn how to, whether it's edit video oh, yeah. or whatever, what's what's like the best piece, piece Dude, of advice you that. can give to them? I love that. You know how you do it? You go out and do it. You grind. I don't care if it's a freaking phone, go out and do it, and then be 100% self-aware of of how good you are and where you're at. People want to shoot something, get feedback right away, and think they're number one. I'm like, dude, no. Like, if I see a video that's better than ours, I'm like, Okay, that's sick. And I'm looking at it, I'm like, all right, I like that, or I like that piece, and maybe we can incorporate that. But people don't want to do. 
we have all the time people reach out, hey, can I work for you? I'm like, you, you can. I'd love for you to, but you have zero skill. Or people come out of college. This is the big one. People come out of college, and I, you know, I, I post a job, and I say must include real. I'll get 100 applicants, no reels. The only reel I got was a rack focus on a flower. I'm like, <laughs> that's what you went to I college for for four years? I'm like, so one of my best guys, he's now um, – he had left a year ago. He's on the Disc Golf Pro Tour. It's their main media guy. Dude's a baller. Never went to college. He freelanced for us out of high school. He could shoot. I'm like, dude, you want to work for us? I don't care about a degree. I wanted him to have experience. So how do you get into it? How do you get better? You just got to do it, and you got to stay committed to it. And I, I've been down the road. I've, I've done plenty of free work in my lifetime, it's more than I'd like to admit, <laughs> you know, to get you the reps, to. to get the reps, to make the connections. And we, I, I still do, you know, pro bono work here, here and there, but um, got to be willing to go and put in the work. You know, I got a guy that, that one of my, this is a great story. One of my best guys um, is autistic. Mm. He's from Cambridge. Yep. He's, he's high functioning. Little Webb. Shout out Little Webb. Um, Shout out Webb. He is one of the most reliable people you could ever have he that kid would work 24 hours a day and never complain once he just loves it and how it how he got on board with us is you know i protect the brand i want to make sure that you know i'm not doing any charity cases or anything like that you know we got a business to run and i saw him making stuff on his own here he is autistic he is um you know he, he had got bullied in the past he but his confidence man he didn't care he's like i'm gonna do this i'm gonna put my stuff out there. I'm like dang that's that's huge and he was filming stuff for his hometown team and i'm like man you want to you know want to come like shadow us and and he did and he he came for a year unpaid and we didn't not like we were making money off his back he wasn't really doing work we were yeah, using yeah. but he was putting in his time we gave him an extra camera shoot it we'll coach you shoot it we'll coach you never complained did it did it did it did it year later mike you want a job he finally got to the point where it. he was good enough it's kind of like Corey did with you guys just bring you in you know low level let you earn your way in right and for it sure. wasn't i'm not saying everyone has to do that but he he earned, he wanted to do it. He wanted to do it so bad, and I, I mean, I love that kid. He's back editing right now. And he earned your respect too. One hundred percent. Work and his one hundred percent. Here's a kid who in high school got bullied. Mm-hmm. You know, people said whatever about him. He went out for the football team. He played football. He still loves football. He's super independent, and uh, yeah. So do it. Yeah. Go and do it. That's a yeah. great story, Aaron. Yeah. How long has that guy been working for you? Oh, a few years now, three or four. We're actually working on a little piece, uh, like a little mini short film with him. Um, oh, that's awesome. To kind of b- build up other kids that are that are in his realm that might, yeah. you know, that might have a little um, hesitation. You yeah, know, you know, he is, he is super high functioning, but um, yeah, and he embraces it too. That's you know, awesome. he has a, his autism warrior shirt he wears. He really tries to be a, a spokesperson for it. So that's great, man. Well, shit, Aaron, anything else you want to share with these young entrepreneurs listening, man? Grind, don't quit. When you want to jump off a bridge, don't do it. Get to the next hour. You won't want to jump anymore. Yeah. You know, I tell people all the time, man. Like When you get to the next hour. Dude, I, I look for a bridge about five different times per day. But then five It's all other about times. solutions, dude. Yeah. And then I'm like, all right, calm down. All right, I'm good. Um, so, man, j- just fight through it. If you want to take a chance, take the chance and go all in. Don't go half in. You got to go all in for to really see if it's going to work. And it's yeah. okay if it doesn't work. Yeah, you yeah. can always do something else. Well, yeah, or you can shift it like this way just a little bit. It might work yeah. even better. Like that's the thing. Like, yeah, you, you got to be on the fly. And don't worry about what other people are doing. You just grind. Yeah. And just, I mean, you can look to other people for inspiration, but but don't think that you're not good enough because you're not doing this, dude. I was a. You're not somebody. You're not something until you're something. Yeah, right. Yeah. The brand isn't anything till it's something. So you might. No one's going to know you for a long time and not going to mess with you for a long time. But finally, they're, they're going to get it be like, oh, that pops. Oh, yeah. So, yeah, that's the advice, man, the young entrepreneurs. Um, just just do it. And you got to be all in. Fucking love it. You know? Where can they find you at, Aaron? At Storied Rivals on every platform. Need to grow our TikTok like you guys, man. I know it's popping. We're we need to there. We need to put some time into it. But at Storied Rivals, my personal social media is trash because I don't really post anything, but I got to do it. <laughs> I got to do it, man. <laughs> the, the content guy talking about his uh, I'm telling you, man. I'm you just need so... to do what Trey does. Just post a picture uh, shirtless every morning and tell everybody good morning. Now, that would yeah. be. You got all the fucking mommies after him, bro. Yeah. Do the <laughs> <laughs> Pull that clip. <laughs> Aaron, I love it, man. I'm glad to have you yeah, on here, thanks, buddy. Thanks so much for having us. Absolutely. And thanks for the partnership, man. Kids yeah, love it. Yeah, shit, bro. It's, a, it's been amazing. All right. I'm your boy, Corey G. That's Small Arms, Danny. This is at Trey Speed and the graphic gangster no himself, Cole Susak. <laughs> Aaron, it was good having you on. We out.